Welcome to Badger Tough Inside the Circle. I'm assistant coach Craig Picorni here with Hall of Fame head coach Alan Picorni. Turn it down just a little bit so we're not popping in your ears. Today we're joined by junior captain Robert Greenwood coming off a nice 4-0 run to start the season and a championship at the Bennington Invite. Yeah. So welcome Robert. Our first guest on the show. First one brave enough to join us, I guess. So we'll I took a risk. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anything you got with Craig Craig's ideas coming up, you gotta watch out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so a quick uh, intro to the show. We will do a little recap of this past week's competitions and practice, give you a little preview of uh the upcoming week and uh talk to Robert a little bit and even answer a question we got for him. So uh, we'll kick it off. Um, as the normal's been lately, uh, the show's brought to you by MidwestDesigns.org. You can go on there, look for uh, bags for going to the state meet, those clear bags, since you have to have those if you want to take anything into the CHI Health Center, and you can take that in the, the basketball state tournament or any other arena that has um, – clear bag policy which is basically every arena now so uh, check it out midwestdesigns.org we're going to come up with a few other things hopefully sometime soon too so um quick recap of the week uh just practices and other things good week of practice a little shorter when we have competitions than the full week but kind of our norm now this part of the season yeah as you get into the season it uh it will get uh Shorter week. I don't know if we have a full five day week until end of January anymore. So, um, damn. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe. I didn't realize that. Yep. So, uh, anyhow, we we had start off the week. I thought, uh, you know, Monday was tough. Monday was a tough practice as far as, um, you know, we we got a lot of new kids. And, you know, that's been spoken about quite a bit, but. Uh, uh, you know, just the uh, kids catching up and learning the technique. Um, some of them are struggling with that. Uh, kind of drug on a little longer than I'd hope uh, at times uh, in some of the technique. Uh, but but they need that. Um, you know, and I tell our older guys and experienced guys, and I hope you remember this, Rob, always, that, uh, um, you know, for you guys, that's bonus time, you know, when, we, when we're drilling and, and we're working on a move and, and if it's taking us longer with the new guys, it's the Keep with old, it. right. Stay with it. Work some different uh, variations of the technique. Um, you know, different setups if you're on your feet, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, it is bonus for those guys, but uh, it does. It, you know, I, if I was struggling with Monday, I guess, um, because of it was taking so long. And we're overall, I'm, you know, we're behind about two days from where I'd like to be with our technique overall. Uh, you know, just because of uh, all the new guys and, um, you know, it's, it's just taking a lot longer. Uh, you know, when you have 19 guys who've never wrestled a, you know, in high school before, um, you know, it takes a while to get around and help them all. So, uh, uh, you know, it'd be nice to add more coaches on, but uh, you know, we have what we have. And fortunately, we will be getting a, a student uh, uh, teacher coming in the second semester helping us out. That'll help, too. Um, you know, as far as, uh, showing the technique and everything and, um, you know, that'd be good. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at with practices. Um, you know, I think the, the intensity, you know, in the live part and, and the uh, eagerness for the kids to learn, you know, that's good. I mean, like I said, when we were struggling with it, at least guys were raising their hands saying, help me, you know, and, and it was just a matter of getting around to everybody. That's, that's the thing. So. Uh, you know, there's, there's positive and negatives about it, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I'd say not really anything negative. It's more or less we're just uh, struggling with that right now that it will catch up eventually, and, and later in the season we'll be able to go through things quicker and, and be able to pick up the intensity a little faster and, and maybe even get out a few minutes earlier. Um, I said maybe. <laughs> Robert got, got a big smile on his face when he said get out earlier. but <laughs> So... Uh, Anyhow, I don't know what you guys have seen about practice or Robert, what you think. I mean, you're. Uh, yeah, I noticed that 
I've checked like your sheet and there's like during demo time we've gotten like one or two things out of the three that you have written down but as far as their like worth ethic is going they're like actually trying to go for it you don't look around and see people just kind of laying around sometimes that you would see it's just like coach said people aren't getting around to every single person in the time that they need to like get help with the move with the technique but once we do get that down I think they'll be able to pick up like um like the way that it's supposed to be done like work on your own and then try and figure things out on your own and I think it'll improve with the season yes yeah, so that's that's pretty normal uh, things improve with some of the newer guys yeah it's a lot easier when we're drilling to do tweaks here and there as coaches versus with early in the season when we're you know showing in depth every step of the move and, and getting those parts down so should pick up throughout the season um tuesday we had the black and blue duel our basically inner squad scrimmage wrestle offs um, to determine the varsity team um went seemed to go well um any thoughts for that um well uh you know that was interesting to see how things go when you well, you know, when the lights are on and, and you're in front of the crowd, uh, you know, because uh, the practice, when you're in the practice room, they're supposed to be going live, but it, it there's just a different intensity when you get out on the mat uh, in front of the crowd and, and when things are on the line, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, black and blue duel, a lot of it was, uh, you know, your free varsity spot for some of the kids and, and the others, it was for who was going to clean up the mats. <laughs> and roll the mats so because what we did is the, the winning team they don't have to roll mats out uh so yeah. we, we we try to make it a little bit of fun too uh along with it and i know that there's a lot of uh you know for some of the kids that are fighting for spots uh you know some emotions involved in that too but uh, uh and it's a hard thing for parents to cheer for because you you, you want to cheer for your uh own kids and but at the same time you don't want to look like you're cheering against a teammate and so it's it's a complicated thing for them and uh, so it's a lot different than a normal duel uh, going to watch so uh, but uh, you know there was a lot of close matches that uh, uh, determined varsity spots and and I mentioned this to some of the coaches that what we see now the starting right now could change by the end of the year there's several spots that uh, uh, you know I think can change uh, and, and may change multiple times throughout the year uh, so uh, uh, you know it's just that close in a couple places and uh, some of it is just as guys gain experience uh, they'll get better and uh, you know and, and then there's the work ethic part that uh, um, you know one person working harder than the other uh, sometimes passes up another person and and uh, creating that competition in the room really does help all the kids grow I mean, and, and become better wrestlers because uh, when they're fighting for a spot, they really want a spot. They know they need to pick up their game. Just otherwise, they won't be varsity. And, um, you know, and there's uh, nothing wrong with not being varsity, but that is what everybody strives for, um, you know. And, and I see – several spots where, uh, you know, I, I could certainly see a difference later on in the year. So um, that's kind of what I my take out of black and blue duel. Uh, you know, there's one thing that, uh, you know, I just want to mention, too, that, uh, you know, our, our varsity teams are are determined by, by the wrestle-offs, um, and there's challenge matches every two weeks approximately. Uh, the kids can challenge. Uh, the person ahead of them in our depth chart and, and work their way up and, and possibly take over the varsity spot. To, um, you know, so they have the option throughout the year to uh, challenge up. It's not a, all a season ending thing right now until uh, late January when we decide uh, you know, the final wrestle off. Um, but that's that spot is, is for primarily just the tournament. Um, when we get to duels, uh, you know, we do use uh, wrestle off as kind of a guideline, and, and I would say 90, 95, or, or better percent of the time, that's what we're using. But there's a chance we might put someone else in in the spot, 
you know, or move guys around for whatever reason uh, to give us a better chance of winning the duel. Uh, the duel competitions are, are team oriented um, and the coaches decide who wrestles who. And uh, cause sometimes you can get a, a matchup where one, you know, especially when you got kids that are real close in ability, one might have sp specific uh, uh, talents in one way. And, and we may have an advantage over an opponent that we can, we think we can take advantage of that and, and get a win or maybe bonus points or something. So, um, you know, that's why we look at those, uh, and the coaches set the duels, uh, you know, and, and another thing with the wrestle offs, I, uh, you know, I, it's makes it easy on a coach to decide who, who, uh, competes. Um, and it, it does kind of settle things on the mat rather than, you know, in some sport, you know, a lot of sports, the coach picks and then there's, you know, <laughs> exactly. That's a good word. People That's what I was looking for. <laughs> People upset and not happy with the coach. So, uh, that's one thing I mean, there is a negative side to that that people don't realize that um, sometimes and we've had not had to do this yet there's a time or two or you get a guy that in the practice room they can and, and in college you see this all the time that's why colleges normally don't use wrestle offs to determine their starters is they can beat everybody in the room but they get out in competition and they shut down they shut down or they're just not – or just they just know how to beat the people in the room. They yeah. they figure it out, how to beat the guy next to them. Yeah, you've been wrestling with the same guy all year long. Sometimes you just know his moves, but it's different when you get on a mat against other guys. Yeah, it can hi happen in high school too. We've had that situation uh, at least one time I can think of another, and possibly another that um, the guy who kept winning the wrestle-off was not doing as well as the guy – the other guy. Uh, in competition, and, and there was one tournament where we went to, or uh, and we're not going there anymore. That uh, we could add JVs to the tournament, and and the JV kid would finish ahead of him, and and would beat guys that beat the varsity guy. But you get into wrestle offs, and and the other guy won, and so that's that's the negative side. But that's pretty rare. Uh, the other negative side is sometimes sometimes people feel that. Uh, you know, they can go where they want um, as far as, uh, you know, for the most part, that's what we, you know, we work with guys and talk with them. And you're talking but about the weight, their weight class. Their weight class, right. Uh, you know, and it might be later in the season uh, where sometimes they they think that, oh, I can change a weight class because uh, it's determined by wrestle-offs. It's not, it's their right. Um, there's some truth to that, but not entirely. I I kind of, to start the season off, I, you know, we work with guys to where they want to go, and, and I like to get the lineup set at some point. Um, it doesn't mean we don't change. You know, we did kind of make a change last year. We thought that, um, you know, that we would be a stronger team down the down the road with a change. Um, you know, and that works two ways. Sometimes it's the person uh, that's moving uh, that thinks it's their right to move. Well, you know, it's not entirely. If, you, if you're going to hurt the team, I don't. I'm, I wouldn't. Wouldn't make that move, and and so that might become a problem then. You know, with with either the the athlete or maybe parents not understanding that that's that that's not the, that's the right to move, and you're not letting them move. Yeah, it's know. still a team sport. As much as it's right. mostly individual, it's all individual matches. There's a, there is a big team aspect, and that team aspect's grown over the years with the how much duels have blown up and gotten more and more and more important. Right. And, you know, and it's just like, you know, let's, uh, let's use football as an example. Uh, you know, yet most kids kind of go towards the position they want to go. The coaches kind of encourage them where they think they're best. Uh, that's no different than us with our weights. We, they kind of gravitate towards where they want to go, and we kind of encourage them where I w they think it w fits the best for the team and themselves and kind of balance the two. Um, but uh, you wouldn't see a, a running back middle of season and switch into a quarterback and think that he deserves that spot. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you might see a coach say, Hey, I think we'd be better off moving you to a quarterback. And so therefore that's what we're doing now. It, it kind of stinks for the guy you're taking over for. And, and, you know, those things happen and, and uh, you know, that felt real bad about how that happened last year, but it, 
but it did make our team stronger. Um, you know, so there's, there's, yeah, when we talk about uh, Russell, I'll determine, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of, uh, re, for me, it's a lot, a lot easier to handle it. I don't have to determine the spot, but again, I still have to make some decisions once in a while that, um, you know, that when people think of wrestling and wrestle offs, that's the spot that, uh, you know, it makes it harder in those situations that they think they earn, that they, they can do what they want to do. It's still mm-hmm. coach's still decision. Sport. So yeah. anyhow, I probably went a little longer on that, Craig. This might be an hour and five minute show now. <laughs> hour and 10, anyhow. hour and 15. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I like to go on and uh, you, I never, ha- it never happens in practice, Rob. Oh, right? no, never. <laughs> <laughs> So Friday we went down to Lincoln, uh, had a duel at Lincoln Southeast. Uh, interesting Friday because we also had to set up for the invite. So <laughs> we got a little bit of help from the uh, the freshman basketball, helped set up mats, and some of the, the parents, some of the dads came, the wrestling parents came and helped uh, tape down mats. So we thank everybody that came and helped us get set up and not have to be there till 1 a.m. trying to set up. Some of us were there kind of late, but uh, the coaches. <laughs> Back at 10.30 and set up mats for an hour and a half. Yeah, luckily yeah. we had a lot done for us. We just had to finish off some touches, had to get some cables that weren't delivered to us right away taken care of. And really, uh, the guys didn't have to stay much longer than when we got back. So, so yeah, again, that's, that's greatly everybody. appreciated. Mm-hmm. So anyways, on Lincoln Southeast, Class A team, um, gave us a really tight duel last year. Um, I believe it was a one-point duel last year. Yes, they, they beat us by one point. That's so, Don't be a bad uh, memories, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so this year we went down <laughs> to their, yeah. down, down to their home. And, uh, and uh, tell us more about the duel overall, your thoughts on it. Well, you know, I, going into the season, I – I really didn't know where we're at and, and still not sure where we're at. I, I do like where we're at a lot better than I was, was thinking, you know, with the inexperience and stuff. Um, and, you know, the thing that, I, that pleased me the most was, uh, you know, watching even some of the JV kids when they were wrestling, uh, some of the growth that they've had since last year, um, you know, seeing some potential that, that is there some, from some of those young kids. Um, you know, then, then as we wrestled, I, I felt, uh, you know, with the varsity and, and everybody, I, I felt that we were, um, as good or better shaped than, than they were. Um, uh, and the positive, one of the positive I got out of that and, and really even the whole weekend, um, you know, I, I mentioned that we're behind two days on, on demonstrating technique from where I'd like to be. Uh, you know, we're with, with being behind, we're, that's showing that we have, we we still have a long ways to go, and and we're doing pretty well for where we're at. Uh, um, you know, I'm you know still cautiously optimistic yet that uh, we got some bigger things coming up. You know, with Boys Town and and the fracas, it's that's gonna really tell us where we're at for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, I liked you know how we wrestled uh, at this point of the season in that Lincoln Southeast duel. Um, you know, Lincoln Southeast, uh, uh, they're a Class A team, and all Class A teams, one thing you worry about is, is depth, and they're they're generally able to fill out every weight and, and put someone that, uh, uh, you know, is a, is a good, solid wrestler at every weight and when, you, when you're competing against them. And, um, you know, so that, that was always a concern. But uh, I was happy overall with it, I guess. Yeah, it came out with a 52-27 win, pretty – one pretty handily in that duel. Um, it was good to see us actually in our first competition and and uh, taking it to some guys. So especially that nervous being, like you said, nervous about you know where we're at and sure. Um, it's good to see that you know starting off the season we're in a pretty good place. Um, well, Rob, how did you feel like wrestling a guy that was about? four foot tall and about uh, <laughs> his muscles his arms were bigger your legs and, <laughs> yeah, yeah he was pretty big i uh, i could tell at the beginning he was like he was kind of too cocky about himself i could <laughs> tell because he kept walking on the side of the mat and he had this really big wrestler's bag but it was kind of flat so you could tell nothing was in it <laughs> and he wouldn't take it off until like our match and he kept trying to walk by our side i was like 
I don't know what he was trying to do. Maybe in, <laughs> it would intimidate some younger kids, but I I decided not to take that into account, and I just yeah, tried good. to go out and wrestle like I usually would. Yeah, and that's what you got to do. Some you know, there's you see guys where they stare down their opponents and are like that. He's got an empty bag that I don't know. <laughs> that's intimidating, but ooh, an empty bag. But, yeah. But uh, that's good that you you reacted that way, and that's good lessons for our younger kids. That don't worry about how the other guy's acting. Um, you know, you, you should walk in with confidence yourself. But uh, arrogance and overconfidence is is not good. But uh, um, I thought it was a good good match for you. I uh, got a got a good win. Uh, I saw early you struggled a little bit with the strength and but you adjusted and that was good to see. So um I was happy to see with that. And ultimately with like when you see someone who's jacked like <laughs> that kid was ultimately as much as he may look like that big or something it in reality, you guys are both same weight class. He had, he has to be somewhere around your weight either way. So even if he is super strong or whatever, as long as you use good technique, his strength's not going to be able to beat that. Yep. Yeah. Craig, what did I always tell you guys? When technique you're little... beats, beats strength. Strength helps, though. So get in the weight room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Strength helps, but technique always beats strength. Um, one thing, kind of a, a side benefit, I guess, with uh, Lincoln Southeast is they've got Bauer there on staff and – um, we got to see a couple guys throw a twister at us, which usually we don't see <laughs> till, you know, the fracas when we're That's wrestling some of those Western team. teams at, or even Lexington yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, like that was nice to see that and kind of a reminder, you know, tell everybody what to do when they when we get that situation. So we got caught a couple times. I think two matches we got caught in JVs, um, but then we were able to make adjustments by the varsity duel, and every time they tried it, we were catching them basically on their back. Mm-hmm. I think every time, maybe one time, not quite on their back, but yeah, that's the thing with the with the twister, and and sometimes when we show it, all guys are all excited, thinking, "Hey, this is a cool move that's gonna work," but uh, and, and it, it's one of those moves that you'll catch guys off guard and and, and uh, can get a pin, and and uh, you know, and if you're really good at it, you you can win some with it, but uh, uh, you know, it's it's. It is one of those moves that, uh, like you said, we were able to adjust to it. And, and uh, you know, once we saw it, the JV gave us a chance to talk to the varsity guys to watch and gave a real quick uh, discussion on how to stop it, which the guys who've been around before know already. And uh, we were able to catch a couple guys on their back. Because basically what Twister is, they're rolling across their back, taking the opposite direction you think you're going when they're working at what we call a head chancery. And, and they reverse directions real fast, and it catches you off guard, and you end up rolling through and, and getting – and it's really tight when they get it, and it's it's about over. So, But if you know it's coming and able to adjust and catch it right, as they're rolling across their back, you'll catch them there, and, and then mm-hmm. they'll be in trouble. So, yes. any, any other notes from Lincoln Southeast? Uh, Robert, do you see anything or think of anything from the guy's point of view? Uh, um. We're a little slow on some of our technique, obviously, but that's from, like Coach said, being behind. But so far with a duel and the recent tournament, I feel like our, we've got a pretty good confidence boost so far in the season from what we were supposed to be. So some of the guys may be a little more confident going into the more weeks, which is definitely a big factor when it comes to wrestling. I, I had troubles with that my freshman year, I know. But... uh also, coming in to something like the next Boys Town tournament, we have to be aware about confidence because if it lets us, like, take us take us over, we're probably going to get shut down. You just have to be aware of it and use it when you know, like, the right way to use it. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Saturday, like, so we had the Bennington invite. Um, speaking of comments, I think we had a lot of guys going pretty confident in that tournament um, as a team. Uh, took home the runner-up plaque. Uh, we had nine medalists, uh, three champs, a second, a third, and four fourths. So good turnout for the good result for the team. Um, like I said earlier, Robert was one of our our champs there. First uh, varsity championship ever. So first of many. Yeah, long <laughs> long overdue. I feel. I felt like I was supposed to be like more crazy about it but i feel like it was a goal that i set last year and maybe i just did an accomplishment 
it was an accomplishment an accomplishment that I got but I felt like it should have been done last year but I mean first one down many more to go <laughs> I mean really all three of our champs were juniors so it was good to see see you guys uh coming up in the uh moving up in the upper classes yep and uh, you know a couple of guys who weren't champs some of those seniors that uh they just had some tough guys and yeah. I, you know i guess we'll get into that more as we go mm -hmm. but uh um mm -hmm. uh, yeah there's a couple seniors i'm really pleased with and i guess i'm getting ahead of where you want to be at craig right now or i mean or we can get just kind of we might as well just run run through the weights um we didn't have anybody at 106 um not very many people at all had anybody at 106. There was only two, two guys. That, that was the uh, first time ever. One finals match. <laughs> Straight to the finals. That was <laughs> unusual. I, we've never had that before. But, uh, you know, especially with uh, the A and B schools that we have, that's that's a surprise. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, shoot, there's one year we had eight guys in our own room that were 106 pounders. Uh -huh. But uh, that, that was different, certainly. And then at 113, we had Walker there. He took fourth place. Um, I'll let you talk about his performance there. Well, Walker, uh, he, yeah, he had a – I was real pleased with his tournament. Uh, um, he's kind of a kid that uh, needs some confidence. Uh, uh, you know, that's something he's – he's been in club before and, and watched him in middle school. Uh, you know, the, the club wrestling did. He did a lot of the – I call them beginner tournaments, the local tournaments. Uh, you know, he – didn't really go to the the bigger uh, regional and national level type of tournaments, so he, that gives him some experience, which is good. That's a good foundation coming in, uh, but he's always struggled a little bit with with his confidence, uh, and that's something I'm working with him on quite a bit. And I, I hope this helps because uh, if he ever gets confident and and, and maintains that, he's going to be real tough. Uh, yeah, he pinned both of his guys in his. He went two and two and got two pins, so. Yeah, and and uh, you know, in, in our tournaments, you know, it's not the toughest tournament out there, but it's also not the easiest either. You know, you got some good teams. You had, you know, two ranked teams. You have, you know, a couple of Class A schools in there, um, so it's a solid tournament. Um, I mean, shoot, one year, uh, when Prep Creighton Prep used to come, uh, they finished sixth in our tournament. But they got third in Class A, so um, you know our tournament's not quite that strong at the time. But still, you got a you know Missouri Valley is very very tough. They're they're number six in Iowa right now, ranked, and Wahoo is number two ranked in, in Nebraska. And uh, you know and Elkhorn South has a solid lineup, and um, you know and and we're okay ourselves. We end up uh, finishing second ahead of Wahoo. So um, you know that. Uh, it, it is a, a good tournament for us. Um, and uh, as far as Walker, again, uh, very pleased with, with his performance. And hopefully that confidence gets him going uh, down the road to the future. Yep. At 120, another freshman, Gavin, uh, took fourth place. Yep. Gavin, uh, you know, another one of those uh, wrestlers who you know, had a little bit of club experience. Uh, not a lot, but a little. And and uh you know coming into high school it's a big step from middle school to high school and and watch him in middle school um uh, you know he, he could tell he, he had a ways to go yet for high school but uh he came in and he's he's working hard and actually him and walker are partners you know drilling partners so uh you know sometimes you see that we're two drilling partners working together if they were working hard uh you know they're gonna those guys are both gonna start passing people up and and, and excelling so uh um you know it happened with your brother jake and wrestling right. with brett uh, yeah. velasquez all the time and <laughs> and uh so uh you know those things can happen and really happy for gavin uh, you know he's uh uh you know he's still got a ways to go development uh, which any freshman all freshmen do i mean mm -hmm. there's not a single freshman we've ever had including the bretts that uh, were four-timers that didn't have ways to go yet but uh uh you know he he's a hard worker uh he is aware of where his body's at and as he's scrambling and and uh, uh he he's able to catch guys in bad positions if they make mistakes and and that's good that's very good uh if you can do that and then start learning technique uh 
uh, you know, excelling in your technique, you're going to be very dangerous down the road. So um, still got a lot of potential on the guy, but I'm real happy to see him get his first varsity medal. And and uh, he battled and, and almost uh, had a chance of getting third. The score doesn't really indicate it. Mm-hmm. You know, in the end, I think he gave up mm-hmm. some points at the end trying to make stuff happen. And But uh, real happy for him to, where he's at right now. Yep. 126, got another fourth place, Matthew Coe, uh, really coming along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matthew, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that in, he ta- he keeps working hard in the off season and wanting to get better, wanting to get better. And, and uh, you know, last year I thought he'd have a little bit more of a breakout year, how hard he worked. And, and, and you know, watching his development, you could see he's doing the technique right. Um, you know, it – it was a confidence thing, you know, and, and this is where confidence makes a huge difference is you may know the technique right, you may know how to execute it in a match, but if you're not at all confident, you're not going to e- execute it at a high enough level to finish it. Mm-hmm. it you, so that's kind of where he was at last year, and, and uh, I think we had a conversation right around district time and as to, you know, where he was at, and, and uh, you know, one of the things that finally came out was that uh, – uh, you know, he's a, he's a little afraid to make mistakes um, with his with his uh, technique, and and I said, okay, well, how's it working now? I mean, you're not winning like you had hoped, mm-hmm. so why not go all yeah. out and see what happens? And yeah. you know, and he did it district, and he scored on a guy. I think the guy was a state medalist, if I remember right, from Northwest. Mm-hmm. He scored on him, scored a takedown on him. He he, uh, you know, beat a kid from Elkhorn who was a close match earlier in the year he tech followed that kid and uh you know the problem was it was districts and and uh you know he wrestled good uh but he couldn't quite get through um, right you know and then this year you know we're starting off right away okay you need the intensity um you know and and uh i think it was his second match uh, you know he was out there he, he kind of looked like he did last year a little uh you know not really intense maybe being conservative or something and i yeah that you know, first period he was just kind of being more timid and, and i thought that the other kid looked like i was like man this kid's gonna beat him you know like if he by the eyeball test this that kid was probably the better wrestler and, and we had a little break in the uh, action on the period and i was able to say something to him about his intensity and and how you know to pick it up and boy he picked it up and just Tore the kid apart after that and pinned him. Yeah, Yeah. about a minute and 15, minute 14 into that second period was able to get a pin there. Oh, that's that kid you were talking about. I thought you were talking about the the Elkhorn South kid he wrestled. Oh, no, that was three to four. Nope, that was a different match. That uh, was a close one. But, uh, you know, so for him, you know, he's – it was good to see him get that uh, varsity medal and, and, uh, you know, and and, uh, hopefully that gives him the confidence that – he can consistently wrestle at an intense level, and I, I think he'll pick it up and, and have a real good year for us. So at 132, again, Robert won the tournament. 3-0 there. He's an all right wrestler. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh, Robert. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> get everything but get a pin. Got a tech fall, got I, a major. I need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times that I had people on their backs and didn't finish it this weekend was crazy. I gotta work on my pinning skills, but yeah. Well, we got. I got some notes for you. Mm-hmm. I got the something I, you know, I saw in the duel too that uh, we'll work on on Monday. But uh, perfect. Um, yeah, and that's just uh, you know just adjustments to, mm-hmm. to make to get the pins. But uh, certainly a great tournament, to, um, you know, to to win that that tournament. So glad to see that. And like I said, many more to come yet. Yes. <laughs> At 138, we had Colby Puck also picking up his first uh, varsity championship. Uh, went 3-0 on the day. Yeah, Colby's a guy that... Um, All second I, period pins, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, last year I thought that, uh, you know, he started off the season doing well. Um, you know, as a sophomore, uh, he uh, kind of struggled a little bit as we got to the fracas and the EMC duels. Uh, I mean, those are just brutal things that if, uh, you know, you go out there and I can, the fracas, you have seven duels. If you have, you know all about this, yeah. Rob. You have Freshman seven tough years. kids. 
Yeah, I remember. That was brutal. <laughs> I remember telling Rob. <laughs> but every match, uh, that guy's ranked number one. Sorry, Rob. Yeah. That guy's ranked number one. classy now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that guy is not in rank number one, but he's probably he's, two he's maybe. probably a state champ somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, probably... remember, I remember one of the matches I was wrestling Max Mayfield. Oh from yeah, Lincoln. And usually when I look over in the corner, and he's always like, "It's all right, go down, whatever," says something. And I remember second period, I'm down like eight nothing already, and I look over, and coach just goes. <laughs> down <laughs> whatever like, you want oh no <laughs> but yeah, yeah. so well, we yeah. run through a, a, a run of duels in a, the end of december january between the fracas and then our badger duels and then emc duels so we get a lot of matches and if you get on the wrong side of uh momentum it's uh, hard to come come back from right and i thought that's what happened to colby and then that that hurt his confidence later on the year and it kind of and and the other thing he was being overpowered last year at times i thought he did a fan wise yeah strength wise i you thought he did a fantastic job in the weight room this summer and uh you know be good example for other other guys that uh you know and and that's something we'll talk about late in the season what they should be doing the off season but uh, he did an excellent job in the weight room and and got his strength up there. He's probably, I would say, uh, above average, slightly above average strength for his weight, uh, which is good. Uh, he, I always felt his technique was, was good. Um, you know, I, I think he's one of the most intelligent wrestlers on our team. Sorry, Rob, I guess. <laughs> you, you might, you're, you're close. Colby, you he, he, he could see him wrestling with technique, and he, he's an, an intelligent wrestler. And, and now he's found a, Something he really likes and he's working on and 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 it, and it's working for him and he got three pins the other day with mm -hmm. it. Uh, I'm not trying to give it away any hints to anybody out there <laughs> listening from Scott or Blair or anybody else. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, um, you know, we got a few adjustments for him on that that'll make him even tougher there, and and so that's all positive. And uh, you know, hopefully he's got the confidence now. I, I felt that if he got if he got confident in his ability and and uh, he could he could be someone that really will surprise people this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think you mentioned you mentioned it with uh, Matthew Cohen. I think it kind of is very similar with Colby, where when he wrestles more aggressive and more intensely, he just wrestles better. Yeah, you know, he gets a little upset with somebody. Watch out, he'll start <laughs> beating on kids. So <laughs> I've seen it. A more than a couple times where it's like, eh, it's a close match, and then he thinks, you know, he gets hit funny or gets mad at the kid, and all of a sudden he goes out and just pounds him the rest of the match. So Maybe you should yeah. slap him before the match. <laughs> just, <laughs> just I, I, I think his parents line. would be okay with that. I know his parents pretty well. <laughs> they might be okay with that if it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so be careful of some people, though. But Yep. Uh, 145, we had Zach Utech. Yeah. Didn't quite have the day he – was hoping it's a um, rough weight class yeah yeah tough it was weight class there number one it was a tough one um you know in in the duel he had a returning state medalist and after his match i said you know it doesn't get a lot tougher than that throughout the year and, and then i saw his draw at, at <laughs> Benton invite first round oh man it does get tougher uh yeah. you know he had uh you know a kid from uh uh, Missouri Valley. I don't remember what place he got at state last year in Iowa, but uh, he beat Devin Delancey mm -hmm. the year you know last year in, in the finals. Mm -hmm. So he, it did get a little tougher, <laughs> and uh, um, you know tough overall weight class. Uh, you know thing with Zach is, you know he 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 missed a, a little time uh, early in the season uh, with a vacation. Uh, he just needs a little, just need to catch up. Number one, yeah. um, you know timing and stuff is off and. And, uh, you know, once he gets that caught up and gets his conditioning uh, where it needs to be, uh, you know, I think he'll, he'll have a better season. But, uh, yeah, it started a, little, started a little rough for him right now. Yep. At 52, we had uh, another freshman, Luke McDonald, get fourth place again. Um, tough weight class there, too. Um, yeah, the middle weight's real tough. Um, you know, 45 was tough. 52 is probably even a little bit tougher than that. That's probably the toughest weight class overall mm -hmm. uh at, at the uh, tournament this weekend uh when we're doing the seedings we you kind of see that um you know luke came in at a sixth seed uh so finishing fourth he finished higher than 
uh, what the coaches indicated. They thought based off of uh, last year's results and, and, and coming up, and you know, and we couldn't argue any higher. We, you know, as far as I mean, obviously we don't have the as a freshman, you don't have the any criteria to to seat them higher. But uh, um, you listen to what you know when they're state qualifiers, returning state qualifiers, returning state medalists. And you're a freshman. How do you say well, we're better than that? You know, right. you can't, and and uh, you got to got to show it. And so he did a nice job of uh, getting fourth. Um, you know, his first loss to that Omaha Northwest kid, and that, actually both of his losses were to that same kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that kid's very good. He did not go to state last year because he didn't make weight at districts. But he's uh, a state returning state qualifier the year before right and he was yeah. one match away from a state medal mm-hmm. that year so last year he's probably state medalist uh you know in class a and and probably this year looking at a high medal and, and i didn't i didn't look up where he was ranked but uh, high medal or possibly you know contending for state title mm-hmm. um you know and and uh, luke got in the, the match first match actually luke was lead and he got the takedown uh, the kid got an escape and Luke got into a situation where he was trying to horse the guy over, and, and that stuff worked in middle school because mm-hmm. Luke was stronger than all the guys. This was a senior saying, no, punky freshman, I'm not going to let you do that. <laughs> Tossed him to his back and and uh, and pinned him. You know, So good lesson for Luke. Uh, we talked after that, and he seemed to handle it well, mm-hmm. which is good. That's something he needs to work on. And, um you know, and, and the one thing I like about Luke, and, you know, he went after the guy in the next match. It didn't phase him. He went after him. It was a closer match the second time. Uh, you know, still lost. It's, you know, it, the kid's athletic. The guy's a senior. And you're still a freshman. Yeah, he uh, lost 5-2 to two in that second match. But I think it was 3-2 to two with about 20 seconds left. And Luke yes. was on the attack. And just that last second takedown off it, just right. off his attack. So Right. And, and – the thing I like, and I hope other guys uh, pick up on this stuff, is, uh, uh, you know, uh, for a freshman, this is fantastic. Uh, the attitude was that uh, he was he was wanting to wrestle him again. It would be the third mm-hmm. time. And he was like, yeah, where are we going to see him again? He was that's what he wanted to know. And I said, well, next week. Boys down. <laughs> so you get another shot. So that's good. He, he He's not afraid. He, he got beat, but he, he, he wants to go back out and win, you know, so – that's a, a great attitude to have and and uh you know hopefully other guys are like that too that you know even though they get beat sometimes they they want that revenge and uh you know in, in winning so uh up at 160 we had a senior ryan green um went one and two on the day uh, had a couple tough matches there first round and in the blood round before getting a medal yeah, it looked like Ryan was in good position to to get a medal mm-hmm. uh, by three late in the match. Um, you know, I was on uh, on the far mat with some other guys uh, and and kind of watched it from the distance. But uh, it looked like he got a little out of position and and uh, hung on a little longer and should have trying to keep the win, but uh, maybe should have just bailed out since he had three point win and or three point lead. And, um, you know, those are things you learn sometimes when they happen. That, right. uh, hey, you're ahead by three. If you get out of, you're out of, out of position, uh, let's bail and, and still take the win. Uh, you know, one point wins better than than going to your back and getting getting beat. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, then I heard, you know, from the coaches who were there. I don't know if it was you. I don't no, think I you were the, there. No, I, I was not you with me. Uh, Andy and, and Blaze is one of those two guys. Uh, you know, the kid did get called on it once. Uh, he did uh, basically a, a toe hold that's illegal, and and I think I don't think they called it illegal the first time, but they warned him about it that it that's you know it, it was close. Um, so if it's close, they might call it potential dangerous and stop it. I think that's what they did the first time, and and uh, the kid did that again during that exchange, and that might have uh, been what took him over. But uh, either way, um, you know, I mean, he, he might have lost on a an illegal or potentially dangerous situation but uh uh either way you you got to learn to uh you know bail it when you when you should and mm-hmm. and and when when not to bail when to hang on yep. for dear life but uh, uh it's just part of uh continue to learn every day um you know i know he you know he went to a lot of camps over the summer and and uh, uh you know he, he 
was hoping to have a great season, and it's a long season. He can't yep. uh, can't give up now. Um, he, you know, it, uh, some of it's kicking the rust off. Right. You know, there's a difference between going going to camp and and uh, wrestle live. You know, camp they're going to show you some technique and you're going to learn stuff. Um, but when it gets real, right now it's you got your positioning and all that. You got to learn too, and and mm-hmm. uh, get that rust kicked off. So. Yep. He, he got a long ways yet to go over there. So yeah. at one, se- oh. go ahead. At one seventy, uh, another freshman who I think has been looking pretty good, even though he uh, went one and two and fell just short of a medal. Hunter Thompson. I guess I think he's been looking good to start the season for a freshman at one hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah, you know, you see freshmen come in at the lower weights, and and uh, that's no disrespect to those guys' accomplishments, but. Uh, uh, to win at the upper weights when you're wrestling juniors and seniors that uh, uh, not only that their ages they're a lot older but usually they're they're a lot more physically mature and they're mm-hmm. uh, and they've been in the weight room and they're a lot stronger so there's there's a lot more things to overcome in in those situations and and uh, you know hunters uh, you know very talented and uh, he's a very talented athlete um, not a lot of wrestling I mean he wrestled in seventh grade and eighth grade, uh, just middle school only, no club. Uh, to me, that's I mean that that's a good introduction. That's that's all it is is an you know an introduction to the sport. It's not not going to get you a lot of experience, uh, you know, because it's a very short season, uh, you know, little competition. Uh, it's very very helpful, but it's a long ways to go yet. And mm-hmm. so that's what kind of where Hunter's at. A uh, long ways to go yet. Uh, the positive is, you know, he's right there. I mean, he, he's, you know, he's he's uh, without any experience. He's battling guys tough and 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 losing against some of the best ones. So, uh, real excited about his future. Um, you know, he's also going to have to have some battles in the in the practice room because, right. uh, you know, he won one point wrestle off in the black and blue duel and and that one could have went either way. So, yeah. that's one of those spots where. Those two guys are going to push themselves, and and both guys are going to end up better no matter who wins the spot in the end. Uh, and it could be back and forth. It could be one guy one week wrestle off, one guy the next time. And and uh, either way, the two guys really battle for that spot are are underclassmen or they're not seniors. So uh, you know they hopefully they battle together and get better. And and next year if they're in different weights, uh, you know they're just not, not much better. So, at 182, we got Buzz took third place. Um, good to see him take a medal at the home invite and and, and the tournament on a win. Yeah, Buzz is, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, the cradle's coming. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you know, I'm not. That's not giving any secrets to Blair or anybody else. They're just watch him and it's coming, and you gotta gotta stop it. it that's the thing. And uh, but one thing about Buzz is he's been working, trying to learn a few different things and. And uh, to expand his uh, arsenal, um, but I told him I, you know, continue doing that and practice and, and other times when you need to. But but if you're in a match, go to your number one move and put him away. Yeah. <laughs> one of his goals was to win, win a match without by points only. And I looked, you know, I looked at him. I says, you know, I, I'd rather you pin everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and he kind of, and I understand what he's getting at. He's 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 wanting to learn variety of technique mm-hmm. and, and beat guys in multiple ways and, and that's great and and uh, so he, he should continue to work that way but uh, uh yeah go to your go-to move and put it away uh now his one loss was i i was actually very pleased uh with that match because it's one thing to go out and just pin somebody and and overpower somebody and and you you're, you're not sure okay where's that what level is that guy at you don't, you know, don't know. Uh, but the guy he lost to, um, we knew where he was at. Uh, he's probably a state champion type of wrestler in Nebraska. I think he's rated third in Iowa. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the guy came out like he was going to just toy with Buzz, and that didn't happen. Um, you know, Buzz, uh, the guy took him down, uh, cut him right away like he wanted to play with him, and all of a sudden – Buzz didn't stop. He came right after guy attacking guy, and 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 made that guy really start sweating for a while there. And and uh, 
we got on top and i tell you what buzz almost got a cradle locked up on him and and that might have been over um uh, and then it, he ended up getting pinned in that mm-hmm. match but it was something that uh you know as they scramble he got his arm caught uh, in a situation that uh, took him over to his back and and that guy was just too good to to get out from under something like that and but uh, what I liked about it was that he was competitive with him. Right. You know, so that shows that, uh, you know, Buzz is getting to that level that he can, you know, he's competitive with state medalists. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's what I want to see because I'd like to see him make that big jump uh, to a state medal this year. And, and uh, you know, he he didn't, uh, you know, it was a tough year last year for him mentally because he was a, on varsity as a sophomore. Uh, it didn't, you know, he had some difficult wrestle offs and, and, uh, uh, couldn't make varsity, especially at the end last year. So I know that was tough on him, but, uh, uh, I would, I'm very happy how he, you know, he handled it and, and, uh, and this year looking for great things and, you know, and hopefully him and, and even some of these other guys can learn from, from that and, and other guys in the past, uh, you know, we talk about the close wrestle-offs and, and some of the disappointments and and, and some guys not making the varsity, uh, you know, just never quit. Keep going hard. Um, you know, we got uh, uh, Stedman Wang, I remember years ago, uh, the guy was a beast. And when, when he went to JV meets, people were looking and going, how is he JV? Yeah. Uh, well, he, he kept losing the wrestle-off. Uh, we had a, a very good wrestler in front of him. And, and uh his greatest senior year, nobody knew who he was, and then it came out his senior out. year. You know, he, he yeah. finally got a spot, yeah. and you know, and it worked out for him. He got a third place state medal and lost a close one to the state champ, and, and ended up getting third, and um, went on to wrestle at Hastings College, and uh, was a national qualifier up there. So I mean, that goes to show that you keep working hard, never quit. Someday you'll you'll have your spot, and and uh, things go well, and. Um, you know, and, and so that, that happens once in a while. Tyson Bruce is another great example. Mm-hmm. I remember Tyson, his junior year, getting beat out. He thought he had a good chance at varsity and getting beat. He was just devastated. I was worried about him quitting. and and uh, But he stuck it out and kept going hard. And then he made varsity his senior year. And, and uh, I kept telling everybody, watch out for this guy. You know, and, and Tyson was those guys you had to get confidence somehow. Mm-hmm. I mean, he... he he was a lot better than he thought he was and finally started getting confidence and earned a state medal. So again, we're I'm kind of diverting back off, but uh, topic, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, great lessons for guys that never quit. And I mean, buzz is one of those examples that, uh, you know, I'm excited about this year. And I thought his tournament this weekend results, uh, gave reinforced the excitement I have for where he could be at. Um, you know, and even in his loss, he was very competitive with, with a high quality wrestler. Yep. 195, we had a Benton Cornette, took second. <laughs> what a beast. <laughs> <laughs> what a beast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Benton, you know, I, I'm i real happy for where, where he went, ended up. And two, uh, you know, he, he was a, another one of those that uh, struggled a little bit last year uh, in certain situations and, and, uh, you know, didn't have, as good a season probably as he hoped. Lost some matches where he was in good position to win, and and just uh, you know making little mistakes here or there, and and uh, we worked hard on, on fixing some of those things, and and uh, yeah, I think we've identified where they were at now finally at towards the end of last year, and uh, and he's wrestled so far, avoiding those situations that get it, got him in trouble and wrestling with his strengths. You could uh, see him wanting to go to those yeah. situations. Yes, I did. I saw him <laughs> wanting to – you could see him itching to, to get in the, uh, that position, but uh, it was good. Good to see him go out there and do the things that, that, that work for him. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's how you got to wrestle. You can't wrestle like somebody else or like you – you, I don't know if it, how you put it, maybe where you want to be like, but you're not. That's not your strengths. Uh, you got to go with your strengths, and and his strengths are actually very powerful moves. That you know, if he stays with it, he's going to be dang tough. And you know, he did beat a state medalist last year two times, so nobody can say it was luck the first time. And and one time he pinned the guy, and the other time he beat him on points. 
fair and square. So, I mean, there was no luck involved in there. And so I, he's one of those guys that, you know, I, I think that he can, again, like Buzz, his senior year, be be the year that, you know, things just you – know, it makes a huge jump. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a me contender for a state medal, and that's, that's what we're hoping for. And his uh, loss was to state champ, um, you know, Coulterman. And uh, I, I was pleased, too, with how he wrestled him. Uh, you know, he did get pinned. Uh, Coulterman's dang tough. And, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, Benton just didn't roll over. Uh, Benton made him work hard. Uh, Benton scored on him. You know, it wasn't a, a give me point. It was Benton's actions that, that created the score, and 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 that's good to see that, uh, you know, because Coulterman's you know at a high level, and and uh, you know there's not many guys in the state are going to score on him, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and so that was good to see out of Benton, and and uh, hopefully that gives him confidence going forward that, you know, he he can do this and and uh, he can compete at this level and. And, and do the, the moves that work for him, and I, I think we're there. So real excited about about him. Yep. At 220, Garrett won the tournament, um, his first tournament win. Yeah, yeah, so. the three champs all had a first varsity tournament win, so kind of ironic. And, uh, but anyhow, uh, yeah, Garrett, uh, you know, he's another one of those guys that, man, he just always struggled with confidence. Like, Garrett, you're, you're a lot better. You know, like I said, just Gary, you're a lot better than you than you think you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I think he's finally starting to get it. Uh, you know, and some of it is these guys that they saw who they beat and what they did at state last year, like like uh, Benton seeing that uh, kid from Elkhorn go on and get a state medal that he beat twice, and Garrett seeing that uh, you know the kid from Gretna that he beat get a state medal, and and uh, you know and. In both cases, those guys, they fair and square beat them. You know, it wasn't a lucky pin. Now, yes, the Garrett pinned the kid from Gretna, but, um, you know, it was a close match. Garrett put him into position. To, if, even if the guy got off his back, Garrett was going to win that match. Mm -hmm. um, so, but as far as the, at Bennington Invitational, his performance there, I, you know, I, re very pleased with that. Uh, you know, he, he's very tough to score on. Uh, you know, and uh, hey, Garrett, if he gets you down on the mat, you know, he's going to turn you and pin you. Uh, he's very tough on top, and and uh, and and yeah, Garrett's great off the bottom. So, uh, you know, he, he's going to, you know, he's going to do some things this year. Uh, I'm excited about his potential. You know, hopefully his confidence levels got to where his ability is, and if that's the case, he's another one of those guys that I, I think. Uh, can challenge for state medals and and uh, you know so real excited about that. So yep. at uh, 285, we had Aiden uh, didn't win any, but he was still in those matches. Didn't get pinned in either match. Um, I think lost by four in one of the matches. And um, yeah, Aiden, Aiden, uh, uh, he's a fun guy. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he he wants to be good right now um you know and everybody wants the instant gratification and, and be good and, and uh uh you know aiden's done a, a fantastic job since last year you know working in the weight room you know we were doing some footwork and speed work this summer um i was real impressed with his his footwork and how, how well he did with that but probably more impressed with the time he put in extra you know, especially at the weight room, and, and they're doing the extra footwork, and, and uh, you know, whenever he could wrestle, he was wrestling, you know, some open mat or whatever, freestyle, whatever we're doing, he tried to get in there, and, you know, so uh, he he's trying to get better. Uh, one thing is, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a light heavyweight, first of all. You know, he qualifies for 215, um, so those guys are a lot bigger than him. Um, you know, he's a sophomore. In probably an eighth grader's body. <laughs> I mean, not the. I'm not saying that, not negative in any way. He's just physically not mature yet. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, but I've seen a transformation in in him since last year in in his body. You could see he's starting. To, you know, with the hitting the weight room like he did. You could see uh, some transformation already. 
Uh, you know, I, I think some maturity is going to come here real soon physically that uh, is going to change things for him. Uh, and, uh, and the great thing is he wants to learn. He, he wants to stay after practice every day and spend 10, 15 minutes uh, learning more. I kind of felt bad on Thursday. We, he wanted to spend some time. And because it was a day before a duel, there was like a thousand things I was doing, getting uniforms for guys, talking to guys about, you know, their weights and talking about all kinds of things. And our club kids were coming in to practice. And, you know, I told me, you know, you can get a spot somewhere and, and, and work. Uh, you know, they're, they're okay with that and just all that and couldn't get him in just because so many things going on. Uh, but he plans on every day at, staying after practice and doing something with a coach or you know, helping him, you know, working on some technique and, and, uh, you know, and I gave him even some drills he can do on his own to help him develop if, if he doesn't have a partner or, or if we're busy that just go ahead and on your own. So, uh, just a great attitude of what, what to do. And, and so, yeah, yeah, it didn't, the wins didn't come, but, uh, there was big improvements, I would say from where it was last year. Right. Um, you know, last year he was getting rolled over and pinned pretty quick on some of those uh, guys like that mm-hmm. that he saw. And here he was battling with them, you know, in real close matches. You know, he lost a close match. And then, uh, you know, both of his losses, I think, were close, somewhat close. The first one, I think, was by a point or something. And and, uh, and I think there was a locked hands in there that he did. If he, you know, doesn't make – doesn't do that, well, then maybe they go to overtime. But, uh, um, you know, so – uh, and I think he was leading at one point in that match. Yes. Too. Yeah. So like his attitude and like where he's going, he's just you know got some ways to go yet. And and the good thing is we all got time. And um, you know I you, know, you talk about uh, the physicality of the body and all that where where he's at. Uh, you know Tyson Bruce was the same way when he was. It, it took you know he was a late bloomer too, and and it all worked out for him too. So mm-hmm. that might be something we'll see with Aiden and down the road and. Uh, you know, late bloomer his senior year, he's people are saying, "Where'd this guy come from?" And um, you know, I said, hey, "He's been in the room all the time." Yep. <laughs> so, so. Any other notes on the the invite that you want to talk about, or anything you saw, Robert? Uh, no, it was it was okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, just got my just, first championship. It's okay. <laughs> just be ready for next week. Yeah, you know, the only one thing, last thing I want to say about it is just. You know, uh, finishing second head of Wahoo is number two. Uh, you know, going into the thing, I don't think I would have even predicted that, that we'd even be close. And, and uh, you know, so uh, I also do understand that this is not the state tournament. Um, you know, the it, small tournament like this, uh, you know, the Wahoo does have some high-end state points. You know, two state champions in their lineup and a couple other guys could challenge for state titles possibly. So, uh, state tournament wise, yeah, they're they're way out there, but uh, you know that. But uh, where we're at and with our level of experience, that makes me real happy that uh, our ceiling is a lot higher yet. Yep. Um, you know, and even even some of those younger guys, if you look in the future, you know, not just after this year, you know, a year, two, three down the road, uh, some of those young guys, uh, I think the ceiling is real high if they. It, and it comes down if they want to continue to work like they are, which I think they will. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so kind of excited about that, about what I saw uh, for this year uh, and the future. So so uh, next week um, we got a little bit of shiftiness in practice because we got JV has a <clears throat> triangular on Monday, but they're still going to get some time in because, like you said, we got to put in install some things still and – and varsity's going to have a full practice on Monday. And then later in the week, the other way around with Boys Town, Friday the JV will still get a practice in. So a little update on the practices. They're all going to get their nice four practices in. Not going to miss out on too much. But uh, starting off with the JV triangular on Monday, uh, we have Fremont and Elkhorn South. Um, anything? Any notes on that? Uh, no, it's just um interested to see what uh, our guys are – uh, are able to do uh, wh- how long how far they've came along um, you know so that's that's the main thing there uh, you know their development and what we can do for them 
because they're always they're the future. Yep. Uh, and some of those guys, like I say, eh, they're they're fighting for varsity spots. That, you know, they may be the future this year. Yep. <laughs> and then on Saturday they go to Fort Calhoun. That's always a pretty decent JV tournament to go to. Yeah, that's a good one. I think Miller South still goes there. Um, you know, and obviously one of the top Class A schools year after year. Um, and, and they're always deep, so they'll have some quality guys. Uh, and there's several schools around because it's so close to the Omaha area that uh, will pick up a lot of Class A schools there and a lot of the top B schools. Uh, so it's a, it's a great uh, tournament for our guys to go to and, and get some experience at. And, you know, I, and I'm, I never make it out there because with the Boys Town, I, I've tried a couple times going from Boys Town directly out there, but it uh, seems like uh, they're always finishing up before I get there. And, you know, so uh, I've actually been on the road and they called me and said, ah, we're just leaving. So, ah, dang. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of gave up trying that. I, I checked that. And now with track wrestling on, online, I can look. Mm-hmm. Where that was before track wrestling. And I was, as soon as I got down to the Boys Town, I parked the bus. I got in and started taking off to Fort Calhoun. Well, now I just look on track wrestling, like where they're at. Like, well, here's where they're in the finals. I'll never make it. So, yep. So I, that that's been tough. Cause I like watching the JV guys, see where they're at, whenever, anytime possible, um, because uh, you know that's that's our future, and and we need to continue developing them as much as anybody else. Yep. Um, and not only will we develop them, you know, I I believe if I if we can help the lowest guys that pushes our top guys up too and, and makes us a better team now and, and then it also obviously the future mm-hmm. so and then friday and saturday going to the boys town tournament that one's always tough yeah got some good teams there yeah um sometimes you know that's, some brackets are tougher than their state brackets in the past there yeah that that tournament uh you know it had a reputation for many many years as being the toughest tournament in the state um, and, and sometimes even tougher in our state tournament because uh, you had some Iowa teams come in and and some of the top teams in, in Nebraska are there. Uh, it's kind of changed over the years, uh, mostly because of a big tournament in Council Bluffs that uh, took a lot of the uh, Council Bluffs teams that were, were highly ranked in Iowa. Uh, but you still see some of the best uh, B schools around and some A schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like we talk about Northwest, is there i mean not that they're a powerhouse a school but uh, uh individuals they have some good ones like you know luke's running into and um you know but you got like omaha central who's ranked number seven in class a they're there you got omaha scott which is um you know obviously the consistently one of the best teams not only in class b but the, but all all state uh, across the state all classes um this year we got uh, a new team from iowa Atomwa. I, I haven't uh, had a chance to look at what, what they're like. Uh, probably look at that closer this week now that we're uh, getting to this week. Um, you know, so it's a it's not what it used to be, but it's still it's still a, a next step up from where we were at this past weekend. Uh, and Wahoo will be there too, uh, you, you know, so uh, several of the top B schools are there. Um, so – be interesting to see where we're at uh, after that, um, you know that, and and so I'm hoping that uh, uh, have a much better idea next week where we're where we're at. But uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be be fun. So, yeah. how would you think, Rob? About about you? Uh, I've been looking into my what supposedly is going to be my bracket, and uh, it looks tough. But that's kind of what i'm looking for i'm looking to f- forward to see where i am compared from this year and the end of last year again some of the kids that i wrestled last year and hopefully i'll be able to do better than last year yeah knowing that boys town's another step up in a level of term any advice for for your teammates and the younger guys that, that you can give them oh well first off we talk about being confident you got to be confident if you go out thinking that you're going to get killed in every match you're going to get killed in every match but at the same time, if you go out there, you give 100%. That's as much as we can ask of you. Sorry, I don't mean to do this. I just happened to notice that you're covering up your face. I don't oh. know if that crazy was intent to do that. Or... <laughs> no, that's, all right. that's Robert back there, if you didn't see him before. 
So sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Anything else you you could think about? Uh, just go out wrestle as best as you can. Yep. That um, was good advice. Yep. So uh, each week we're gonna give a brief update on the state duels wild card system. Um, not much to update one weekend, but uh, we've got forty three points. That if you take uh, what they had released on Thursday right before noon, that would put us right about fourth in the in the standings. So that That's, doesn't mean much right now. Yeah, it's so. a way too early analysis of that. But <laughs> super uh, early analysis. We're in fourth in the. Uh, in the ratings for state duels. I suppose if they end it now, we we're in a state duel cha- uh, tournament. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's go. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> results from Friday and Saturday that haven't come in yet, so that definitely could change. But that's a actually a relatively good good spot to be in um, it, with 43 it, points. Yeah, and bringing that up, that's going to be something we haven't had before to to continue to look at throughout the season. And it'll be interesting to follow and where people are at and and. Uh, um, yeah, I didn't change our schedule this year. Uh, you know, going into the season because I have no idea how what what we do affects where we're at and how you know. So this will give us a chance now to kind of analyze what we need to do schedule wise to be able to compete at the state duels or get into the state duel tournament. Uh, you know, I, we're not going to drop turn teams to to pat our schedule. That's not the case, but. Right. To, it, it's how tough do we want to schedule? You know, like we added Burke this year. Hmm. Uh, you know, I intend to keep them for many years because uh, they're a quality team. You know, this year might be a little rough, but uh, uh, hopefully it's rough on them. I don't know. <laughs> Get, shock them, shock the state, you know, and shock Burke. And uh, but uh, you know, we added them, and and uh, don't have any plans on on changing that. But uh, uh, but interesting topic to discuss that never had in wrestling yet. That where you're at on those points yeah, it'll be fun to talk about especially as we get into you know 2019 into january end of the january uh where the jostling's at how close teams are and you know what duels could affect because even beyond what we have scheduled what we see and what other teams see at dual tournaments could change depending on how well you do at the tournament you may do well or, or do poorly against one team and suddenly instead of you you know, having a tougher team later on, you don't have someone as tough, and that could really affect your uh, how you do with the the wild card. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll be harder than football to gauge, I think. And you know, I don't, you know, I know basketball um, they have a similar system, but I think it'll be harder to gauge with dual tournaments um, that aren't just a straight okay, you wrestle everybody in a round robin. So it'll be fun to watch. Um, so. Uh, as we mentioned before, we got Robert here. He's a, a junior captain, 4 0 on the season to start. So uh, keep up the undefeated part, and we'll, yeah. we'll be pretty decent by the end. <laughs> I, keep an undefeated streak would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, each week, we see if anybody has any questions. And actually, the, uh, the high school Twitter asked, uh, and I know you answered it on Twitter a little bit, but I'll let you uh, get into it more. Um, what did you pick up at the Leadership Summit two weeks ago? Um, that you put into practice in the, with the wrestling team and any other uh, of the programs you're involved in? Uh, okay, so when we went last time to that leadership summit, I was kind of thinking it was just going to be like, oh, I get out of school kind of thing. <laughs> but actually, no, it was an all-day thing at Lincoln North Star, and it was actually pretty fun. I wish I could remember the speakers' names because they actually had like really good presentations, and I took a bunch of notes but uh, one thing that majorly has affected me so far was um, the word win. I know that sounds weird, but it actually, what she said it stood for was what's important now, which is referring to more as a mental mindset. Because every single time you make a mistake in a match or in a soccer game or miss a shot in basketball, it's it's not about letting that carry through the rest of the game it's just a stat if (laughs) no one has a hundred percent shooting average not even michael jordan someone like that right so it's even if you make a mistake it's if you can bounce back from it and learn from that mistake you can find success and grow that's the main thing that i learned from the summit nice um just some personal goals for the season well Uh, before that why don't you expand a little bit on on your thoughts there how do you think uh, you can get 
Um, well, first of all, I do want to you know explain what that leadership is. That's the NSAA uh, ha- puts that on, and it's, it's quite an honor um, to be selected from that for to represent our school. Uh, you know, Colby went with you. Is that right? We had mm-hmm. Colby and Robert both there. Uh, you know, and there's a few other athletes from our school got to go, but uh, it was it was really kind of a, a select group that uh, uh, the coaches. We had a meeting one morning. Uh, we meet once a month. And, uh, you know, and, and they were nominated and, and selected. So it, it's just an honor, first of all, to be selected for that. But anyhow, okay, so now my, my question for you on that is how can you implement that for our team or, or encourage it for our team or, or, or get our guys to think that way too? Any um, thoughts on that? I know you've been talking about uh, something with Andy called that uh, Mental Monday thing. If you Mindset Mondays, to, yep. yeah trying to get into something like that i feel like we could implement something like that and set some sort of every single time we do that on monday we get one word or something like that that means something sort of in a mental positive mindset that would help us to affect the way we wrestle so like uh uh something that you something bad happens to you and a word that helps you reset your mind and Mm -hmm. or maybe an action an action Mm -hmm. word anything that you can think upon that means something to you that could maybe reset you help you Uh get in the right mindset good good so um fantastic any other thoughts on that or uh no that's about it (laughs) okay so uh at the beginning of each season we have the guys write down um their goals so what personal goals do you have for this season um my main goal is state championship obviously um it was sort of a stretch last year and i haven't ever gotten a state medal but seeing what a person that i wrestled he ended up from lexington he ended up winning state last year i lost to him in like the last five seconds of our match and seeing that he was able to win a state championship i thought like why couldn't i i'm right up with everyone and um, I think this year it's just about being able to get around that curve of being able to beat the people that count because last year I remember that's where I kind of plateaued at near the end of the year. But if I can overcome that, I think I should be able to get my goal perfectly fine. Nice. Um, as a team captain, uh, what kind of goals do you have for the team to do this year? Uh, actually, I think we're going to shock the world. Uh, now that's a weird kind of <laughs> statement, but they – keep hearing stuff like oh we're way too young we've been talked about stuff like that but these young guys actually have a lot of experience it's seen in our first duel I thought we performed actually really well and if we get caught up in things like practices and technique I think we have a pretty good shot of making the state duel tournament in Kearney Uh, I've only ever been once that was my freshman year but uh, I think we have the team to do it if if everyone on the team steps up and we work hard I think we can make that goal. So, uh, any other questions for Robert? No, not at this time, I guess. <laughs> it's early in the season, so we don't have as much. Um, any other hot topics or conversations you want to talk about before we? I think we touched it touched a lot of them uh, along the way. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of get diverted once in a while. And <laughs> that's why we're probably almost twenty minutes over <laughs> our, our our goal. But uh, um, that's never bad to, when you talk about wrestling, I guess. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Well, then, uh, I guess that, that does it for this week. Um, join us next week, Sunday, 2 o'clock, um, or check out the podcast. Just We've uh, got it going on uh, Spotify and Google Podcasts, and I just got an alert yesterday that now it's on the uh, Apple Podcasts on iTunes, so lots of places you can pull that in and listen while on a day like today you're shoveling snow. <laughs> uh, you can listen to the podcast or on a drive somewhere, so. Anyways, tune in uh, next week, and uh, have a good one.